do you want a fully customized wedding invitation suite? Well, we have a great place for you to go. It's called Minted. It has independent artists from around the world where you can get custom designs. You can get a whole suite from save the dates to your thank you notes. <laughs> and you can get free address printing. Just go to from ringdevail.com slash minted. Shannon. And I'm Kim. And you are listening to From Ring to Bell, a wedding planning podcast where we share tips and information to help you plan the wedding of your dreams without all the stress. Wedding Words Glossary Part 6 Flowers, episode number 110. Are you subscribed to the show? Well, don't miss a show. Come on, peoples. <laughs> Subscribe to From Ring to Veil anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you don't know how, just let us know and we will help you. Also, if you subscribe to the show, you will know exactly when we put out a show. Even in your sleep. When you wake up, there's the new show. <laughs> so it makes it really easy. And you don't have to listen to every show. You can delete some. That's fine. If you care nothing about flowers, just swipe it and delete it. <laughs> don't delete it. <laughs> I don't want to be deleted. Do you have an issue with that? Yes. Well, okay. We had a wedding this past weekend. Yes. And it was full of flowers. It was full of flowers. It was really neat because it was very unique. Mm -hmm. Flowers we don't usually use, usually use together and And often. colors, yeah. Because it was purple and chartreuse green, which I love. Yeah, it was really pretty. But I got to use tulips, which we don't ever really use, mm -hmm. which I don't understand because they're purity and they last a long time and they're beautiful. Yeah. And they fit in with almost any kind of style. Mm -hmm. And the lilies mm. were gorgeous. They were gorgeous. I just don't like to work with lilies. They were, they were very fragrant. Yes. And they're huge. Yes. Huge as your, your head. They're like <laughs> big. So they do take up a lot of space. We're talking about oriental lilies, stargazer okay. lilies, not calla lilies. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, we did have mini callas. Yeah, we which had was mini really callas, cool. But this were the ones we're talking about that are huge are the stargazer lilies. So that was fun. And we got to play flowers this weekend. <laughs> and segue. Today, we continue our wedding words glossary with flowers. Yay. Our favorite subject. Flower words, things that you might not understand or know what, that may, they, what the heck they mean. <laughs> All right. So we kind of like broke these out into different groups. So we're going to start with centerpieces and what we call those things. Mm -hmm. The first one is called a breakaway or a, what I call them are multi-level centerpieces. It's a few arrangements, usually short in height. I Short in height, short, tall, medium height. Right. Containing different floral varieties or the same floral varieties that are grouped together to make one centerpiece. So, like, you're using three different bases. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have three different colors of flowers or all the same color of flowers, just different variety of flowers. All grouped together in a tiered effect. Right. Exactly. Hmm. And then the next one is pedestal or compote, which we use a lot. They're, I mean, they're just, they're really easy mm -hmm. and conducive to talking around. Right. And seeing your people across the, the and table. And they're full and usually vintage if you're right. having a vintage inspired wedding because their pedestal vases were around a long time ago. Right. And that's, that's what it's for. That's why it's called that because of the shape of the vessel or the, what would you call it? It's not, they're not really vase. It's a vessel. Bowl, yeah. whatever. It, that's what they're they're called. They they look like a pedestal. They look like a compote bowl. Right. You compote know, bowl, candy dish, yes, whatever you call it. candy dish. Them. That's good. That's good. Um, they, they're they so pretty because the ones that we used this weekend, they don't have to be perfectly circular. You mm -hmm. can make them long looking, right. you know, or overflowing. You have a lot of ideas that, that you can use with a compote hmm. or a pedestal. <laughs> we call them compotes. <laughs> Um, this one is a, this one's called tier, which I already kind of talked about, but this one has like, if you have a cookie plate or a pie plate or something and you want to raise them up, you can put them on that and then have some other things in the bottom. It's usually stacked in tiers. Mm -hmm. Like you have different size of maybe pie plates or cake plates and you can stack them that way. 
I guess you could use boxes overturned or yeah. something like that. Just something where it, you know, kind of stair steps. I mean, I think everybody knows what tiered means, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, globe, which we don't really use that word so much. We use round. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> Flowers that are arranged in a mounded circular shape in a rounded vessel. It's just, they're just round. Right. Globe. You know what that means. Trumpet. I wouldn't necessarily do the shape of the flowers this way, but the vase is a trumpet vase, or I usually call it a pilsner vase because mm-hmm. it looks like a, <laughs> a, a beer. beer glass, but <laughs> taller. I mean, I do have some that are beer glasses that are, you know, shorter, but mm-hmm. usually they're tall, so you can look in between them. Mm-hmm. Under the flowers. Under, under the flowers, so mm-hmm. you can talk around it. It has a mass of flowers at the top. Right. Usually so in a rounded shape with something hanging over the vase or anything like that. So that's really, it also goes by the shape of the vase. Right. Where it's fluted at the top and it mm-hmm. comes narrower at the bottom. Those kind of scare me because I just know somebody's <laughs> going to knock it over. That always, uh, that just, anyway. Mm. Candelabra. We've talked about that before. And so Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> You know, I think he carried a candelabra around. It's basically a huge candle holder that has like five or more Mm -hmm. candlesticks in that. Well, you can use that with flowers. Instead of putting candles, you put flowers. And they look gorgeous. Right. And usually it has a center pedestal where you can put a mass of flowers on the center. And Mm -hmm. then you can either put candles on the arms or you can put flowers on the arms. Mm -hmm. And let them hang down or round or... Very... um, classic looking and, and it's just... classic but you can also make it really kind of modern if maybe you want like kissing balls or pomanders on the top mm-hmm. on you know you have this very ornate candelabra you make it a little bit more modern with kissing balls or pomanders that are all in same color all in the True. same shape yeah. yeah and i know they do make candelabras that are more modern that right. are that aren't all mm-hmm. filigreed and and <laughs> fancy looking you know so garden the garden style centerpieces are typically an abstract collection of flowers. They can, if you want that garden feel in your wedding, it usually has lots of greenery and that fresh picked look out from your garden. Mm-hmm. Lysianthus, roses, lots of greenery, hydrangeas are a good one mm-hmm. for the garden styles. I like the garden style. It's just really just comfortable. And of course, you know, I like tea. So it's like a tea party (laughs) type thing. (laughs) Fishbowl. I think you all know what that is. It's a low centerpiece with a, like a fishbowl with some flowers in it. Which we call it a rose bowl. A rose bowl. A rose bowl. It's a fishbowl. Yeah. (laughs) But you can have clusters of flowers. You can make them round. You can make them... Dang, you can make them hang over. Mm-hmm. Usually they're a rounded bunch of flowers. And they're pretty. They are pretty. But I think we don't like when you put fish in the actual <laughs> bowls because they <laughs> die. Yes. So don't do that. Submerge. This one's been popular recently. It also goes along with the multi-level or not. Mm-hmm. I, I do a lot of multi-level submerged centerpieces, which is some flowers underwater and a candle on top you can do any kind of almost any kind of flowers in there that you know because it's full of water right it'll hold the flower exactly um you can also do it not having water in there and just have the flowers under the glass or inside the the glass glass. Mm -hmm. maybe with a little water on the bottom yeah well you have to have water on the bottom but mostly it has rocks or gems or something on the bottom and you have water and then you put your flowers in you don't have to have them submerged totally in water right. unless you want a floating candle on top right <laughs> right and they're pretty because like you said you could do a lot of different flowers yeah in them. i remember we did one and it had the orchids mm-hmm. in one and then roses in another one with thistle and and then another one just didn't have any flowers right it was yeah. just the floating candle i mm-hmm. mean you could take this and in <laughs> go with and we usually do three but you can do five yeah or seven even usually it has to be an odd number (laughs) yes it has to be an odd number (laughs) and i've seen them like massive ones when you walk into a ceremony or Mm -hmm. reception where it's the main piece you know going into 
and there's tall vases with tons of flowers in them and things like that. Yeah. All right, let's move into bouquets now. And this one, I think, is where some of us get kind of confused by the different terms or types (laughs) of, of bouquets. So we're starting off with the Cascade. And that one was really big in the 80s. In the 80s, yes. And early 90s. So it says, think of an overflowing waterfall, a spill of flowers and greenery anchored by the hand base that you're holding. And usually they are in a some kind of holder. You're not holding stems because you can't get that effect by holding the stems of flowers because they'll break. Right. So they're in some kind of holder. Cascade bouquets resemble a floral train, I guess you can say. You you can go from elaborate, Mm -hmm. huge ones that are heavy. Yeah. (laughs) That you will not throw. Yeah. (laughs) Or you can do a small bouquet. I like teardrop ones because teardrop ones, you can almost, you can usually always use the stems to make it a teardrop effect. Right, and, and that's kind of what you did this mm-hmm. this weekend is the teardrop look. It was it was a little bit cascady, but yeah. not too overly done. Composite bouquets—they're a handheld creation in which different petals or buds are wired together on a single a single stem. Usually, this has roses. I will say that yes, they are pretty. They're also called glamellias because they look like a camellia once you get all of them, and but. It, they made it say glamelia because it's glamour. Okay. <laughs> but I would say use preserved petals, not real petals, because mm-hmm. they're not in water. And you can't keep them in water. And they right. won't stay fresh. And the petals will start to curl. So I would, you know, make sure you use preserved petals. Yes, it's going to be more expensive. Mm-hmm. But it'll last longer. Right. Like through your ceremony yeah. is, you know, the main thing. Right. And, and pictures, too. Yeah. All right. Hand tied. I like this one. And we do a whole lot of them, I think, mm-hmm. because that's like, it's the thing now. Right. So it looks like you went and picked a bunch of flowers and tied it up and there's your bouquet. Mm-hmm. But it's not like that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It takes... Everybody says, oh, that should be easy to do, but it's not because you have to space the flowers out. You have to make it look, you have to have that just pick look and it just doesn't, because I mean, if you just gather flowers, it doesn't look like. No, it doesn't. So, I mean. It's like when you, when you make up, when you're trying to look natural, it takes a lot of work to look natural. Right. It's the same thing. It takes a lot of work to make it look handpicked right. and organic and loose. And usually there's a lot of mechanics involved. So if you think that's going the, you know, the less expensive route, not yeah, really. Not really. Nosegay is a small round cluster of flowers, usually all cut to a uniform length. And it has one dominant flower or color. Nosegays are also, they are tightly wrapped with ribbon. This is basically your normal bouquet. Usually bridesmaids, something mm-hmm. smaller for them. Biedermeyer is the next one. And it's a bunch made up of concentric circles of different flowers for somewhat striped effect. So like a bullseye look, right? Yeah. You have like, say you're using three different types of flowers and three different colors. Or mm-hmm. you can use three different types of flowers in the same color. Let's do red. Okay. Okay. You have tulips, roses, and carnations. Okay. You do a round of tulips, a round of carnations, a round of roses. Okay. You know, kind of all stacked together. Mm-hmm. And so it looks like it's layered almost. Oh, okay. We haven't done any of those, no. have we? It's not very popular anymore. But, yeah. Sure. The pageant bouquet is a bouquet of long stem flowers, and it's usually roses, and it's cradled in the bride's arm. This is impractical to me. Yeah, it is. You're carrying them like this. Like you know, a baby. Like, yeah, like you're carrying a baby, and it's just impractical. You have to hold it that way. It's hard to hand off to someone else right. when you're in the midst of a ceremony. It's just impractical. And I sure haven't seen that at all lately. No. I've had one person ask for it, and I talked her out of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she was happy with yeah. it. Yeah. So the next one is one of our favorites, the pomander, or kissing ball, as Shannon was uh, saying. It's a 
it's basically a ball suspended from a ribbon that is covered in a floral, a flower thing. Yeah. It, whatever flowers you decide. Usually it's carnations because it's, you know, but carnations, they come in lots of different colors. Mm -hmm. So you can match almost any color that you have in True. the wedding. Roses. And carnations are pretty. Yes. They're pretty. And it's, you know, sometimes roses are done. I can see palms. that getting really heavy yeah. and them falling out of them if yeah. you don't glue. And if you're doing it for a flower girl, make sure that the flower girl is of a age where sh they follow directions. Yeah. <laughs> because I've had some swing it around oh. and all the flowers have just, you know, flown out of it. Yeah. So, Oops. needless to say. <laughs> and palmanders make good um, aisle yeah. Isle floral. Too. I've seen bridesmaids carry them as well. Mm -hmm. So they're really pretty. And I like it because you they're they have a ribbon loop. Mm -hmm. You just slide that on your arm if you need to do something else. Right. You don't necessarily have to hold it in your hand. The posy bouquet is a small smaller than a nosegay. And it's but it's similar in design. Usually it's with roses. It's very that's a very vintage type bouquet. Okay. Posy. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it's named for the posies flowers. Mm -hmm. Could be. Okay, and then we're just calling it round. Similar to the nosegay, but usually larger and consists of large, tightly arranged flowers, peonies, roses, things right. like that. The big Garden round roses. bouquets. Yeah, big round bouquets. And this is where you got to get, which I've learned, you've got to get... Um, a good sense of what your dress looks like and mm -hmm. how big you are mm -hmm. personally, uh, how big your frame is. Because if you have a huge bouquet that's covering your gorgeous gown and you're a tiny person, it might look a little weird or kind of off. off. Yeah. yeah. So there you go on that. Keep that in mind. Now we're going to talk vases or vessels. We have kind of already went through this a, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Um, the bubble vase or the fish bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Rolls bowl. It's popular choice for casual receptions. This vase has a spherical shape. Um, you can line them up along rectangular tables. I don't really like that. Stick them in the middle of a round table. Mm -hmm. I think they do good for cocktail tables. Yes. They're really good for that. You just want a little something on your table. But and you can stick stuff inside of it like a terrarium. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, mm -hmm. so cube or squares. Oh, I love these. Mm -hmm. You know, I do. <laughs> I really like, for some reason, I'm just drawn to those square cubes. It's a cube. It's square. It's open on top. You yeah. you pl plop your stuff in there, stick your, I mean, <laughs> just kidding. You, you design your floral <laughs> to make it look beautiful. I just like them. And, and you can do the same thing as you can do with the round ones. You could submerge in them. Mm -hmm. You can tear them. You can make, what is it? They give it a little bit more modern flair if yes. you're having a more modern look of a wedding. They're not round. They're square. So if you're having rectangular tables, you could have multi-level ones, the full length yes. of your table. It gives it a little bit more modern. I those, like are, pro those are probably my favorite, right. I think. The Pilsner. Of course, Pilsner, trumpet, beer glass. <laughs> Usually with a pedestal vase, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a round vase base on the bottom um the fancy beer glass <laughs> that's what it is yes all right the cylinder which we use most often yes it's just the they're not bubbles but they're, they're just tall round they're tall yeah they're usually six to five inches tall or taller and a three to five inch round opening so you can stack them together you can do separates whatever you want you can do so much with them and a pedestal or the compote we've already Same talked kind of about thing. that you know they're medium in height so you can look around them right and you can do all kinds of sort of arrangements with them what we like to do with them is if we if we have somebody who want who has like 12 tables we like to do half the tables in the in the compotes mm -hmm. and then half the tables in the tall pilsners or some kind of a mix of those. Right. So that you have something different on, on tables that aren't, so they're not all the same. Right. It gives a very good visual effect. <laughs> so we're going to talk about arrangements and other things that you need or don't need. That's not really nuts to say. <laughs> um, different, different things that you 
need for your wedding. Different arrangements, things that you wear, things like that. Um, Boutonnieres, of course, is a single bloom or several small blooms attached to the left lapel of a jacket. The boutonnieres are usually worn by grooms, groomsmen, ushers, and the bride and groom's father. You can have grandfathers, too. Yeah, you can. Any person of honor, mm-hmm. male person of honor that you want that to have a boutonniere, you can do. I personally like boutonnieres. Yeah, absolutely. It, it singles a person out. Mm-hmm. I usually do the groom's different, or the groom and the father of the bride's different than the others because they need to stand out more. Mm-hmm. I like simple ones. I don't think he should have a mass of flowers on his lapel. Nothing too big. See, I am. I'm okay if he has a big one. Yeah. I mean, to, I, it's just personal preference, really. If he likes it and he's fine with it, I say do a big old garden rose on that thing. I like it. <laughs> but this is also. It, it doesn't have to be a floral thing. Right. You can. You can get kind of creative with it and do but something But make sure different. he's okay with if he Exactly. You know, make sure he's okay with wearing if you want a larger flower on his lapel, make sure he's okay with wearing that because right. if he's not he's not going to wear it. Exactly. He won't wear it. And like Shannon's like, is he going to want to wear a big old pink rose? <laughs> he might be fine with it, but then again, he might be like I'm not wearing that. No. So check with him yeah the next thing is corsages the Let's bane. not talk about corsages no, i'm just kidding <laughs> the bane of our existence <laughs> they to me they are antiquated right mm-hmm. now i don't like making them i don't think they're worth spending your money on that is just my opinion if you want something to recognize the females in your wedding party your mothers your aunts your grandmothers have them hold a single rose or a small cluster of flowers. Don't put a corsage on their dress when it's going to tear their dress. It's going to, right. even on their wrist, it yeah. moves around too much. It falls apart. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And like you said, antiquated, it feels very old. Kind yeah. of traditional. And, some, and also it feels sometimes they get very promised looking mm-hmm. and your grandmother does not want to wear something that I, 16 year old's gonna wear it to a prom right there are so many other ways to honor i i even think like floral crowns or floral um head pieces head pe- what is it combs yes combs with floral it's that that kind of thing be unique with it garlands they're very popular right now yeah they are <laughs> everybody's wanting garlands it's of course greenery or floral arranged in a line they're mostly tied together they adorn pews, doorways, chair backs. You can have them, you know, farm tables are really popular right yes. now. Have them in the middle of the farm tables. I've seen them run on aisles, which those get, you know. Yeah, and here's the thing. They aren't cheap. Right. We've talked about this before, but it takes a lot to get them. And I know personally, even from trying it myself, <laughs> it takes a lot to get them to look nice. Mm-hmm. Because you can't just go buy it already come off the tree like that it you have to piece it together and 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 make it work it's a lot of labor involved so it really just doesn't i mean yes it's just greenery Mm -hmm. but it takes three times as long to do a garland than it would to piece together a floral arrangement for the middle of the table right so you've got to think about the cost associated in things like this right you know there's other things other ways that you can you can achieve the same type of look so if let's say you do have a big farm table and you like that that greenery look mm-hmm. and that garland look, but you don't maybe you don't hire somebody to make a garland. You hire them to lay nicely on the table, or even on an on an arbor. You like the 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 garland look, but maybe instead of doing a garland, you do a, a piece a bar that's long and it looks like garland, but it's not actually that way. Yeah. So you talk to your floral people. Yeah. And and see what other I other ways you can do that with to achieve the same look, yeah. but maybe less expensive. In exactly, cost. exactly. Okay, um, we've kind of talked about this and other things as well. Mm-hmm. This next the next thing is called a hoppa. It's usually it's traditional in a Jewish ceremony. You can call it an arbor, but a hoppa is traditionally four posts, right, with a cover on top. You can also do an arbor with four posts, too, Mm -hmm. without the cover on top or a cover on top. It does not have to be just for Jewish ceremonies, but they are traditional in Jewish ceremonies because they are to get married underneath them. 
Right. So. Barbers sometimes you get married in front of them. Right. And not underneath them. Ikebana, a Japanese style flower arrangement that are said to be in unison with space, size, earth, and air. So I'm thinking very zen. It's very zen, very minimal. Mm -hmm. Usually three different types of flowers or okay. greenery in, in them. And it's done in a modern design. It's not full of flowers. It's okay. not. So you've got a line and then maybe something greenery that comes around. And so it's very, very sparse, very minimal. If you're having a modern wedding, it's great. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Topiaries, which we don't use a lot. No, we don't. Um, of course, it's a tiered shaped. They're trimmed in shapes with flowers or foliage. Usually boxwood's good for these. Mm -hmm. I don't, we don't necessarily use them for much at all. Centerpieces yeah. or yeah. anything like that. So I'm sure you could, but. But, I mean, if you're going to use something like that, I would go to a garden center. Yeah. And see if they have something already arranged that way. Um, a trellis, which I'm pretty sure most of us should know what that is. It's a wooden frame um, where you have climbing plants that, mm -hmm. that, that climb up. They actually do climb up yes. the uh, the trellis. It's It, it has the trellis look with the, X, what are, what would you say, that big X's? Yeah. You know, like uh, ivy grows on them, mm -hmm. things like that. And then there are floral things that, that grow on that too. And, you know, that that's for your backdrops mostly. Wreaths. Now you can have all. This is wreaths. This is floral crowns. This is all anything mm -hmm. that you design in a circle. So you can have them hanging on doors. Of course, you can have them on your head. You can do multiple ones for a backdrop for your wedding, your reception, anything like that. You could even carry one. Yeah, if yeah. you want. Yeah. So that is all the wedding words for floor for flowers that we have this time. If there's anything we forgot, let us know. We'll add it to the, the show notes, which you can find at fromringtoville.com slash 110. We will have all these words there for you, uh, but make you have to listen to hear. Yeah. Everything. And plus some of these we talked about on wedding floral, mm -hmm. you know, shows our shows, yeah. our ceremony show, our centerpieces show. So go back if you want more detail. You can go back to those shows as well. That's right. Uh, we have a Patreon page. We do not have any supporters as of yet, but that's okay. We would love to have some. If you are that person, go to fromringtovale.com slash give and sign up there. I'm thinking I might talk Shannon into some special um, content just for our Patreon <laughs> patrons. <laughs> that's what you are, Patreon patrons. Um, just specifically for you only. That nobody else gets to see or hear. <laughs> so we'll have to talk about that. Remember, you can reach us anytime by emailing us at info at fromringtobell.com or hashtag fromringtobell on any kind of social media. And until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtovell.com. Music provided by bensound.com. <laughs>